All right, welcome everyone. Um, today is our live stream for the launch of Gatsby 4. We have an absolute jam-packed uh, hour. We will be going through um, all the different uh, updates we came out with, like the first static generation, server-side rendering in Gatsby, running your build process on multiple cores and covering all the new features with a hands-on approach with Patrick Sullivan and Ward Peters. Um, we have a product manager and senior engineer here. Um, they are going to walk through absolutely um, all we did with Gatsby 4. We're going to have uh, Gatsby Cloud open. We're going to have VS Code open. Um, and we're going to be walking through kind of showing you um, everything we did. Rodney and myself, uh, we'll be checking out the chat the whole time. So feel free to drop your questions in there. We'll be going back and forth, moderating it. Um, and making sure that your answer uh, either gets answered here or your question either gets answered here, or uh, we'll be making sure to get it answered in the chat or on Twitter. Um, so without taking up too much more time, because we actually have examples for everything we did, um, let's get to it. Patrick and Ward, welcome. Thanks, Dan. How's it going? No, oh, I'm doing great today. All right. Hello, hello. I know, Ward, everyone is hoping that we would see goats and some sunglasses at the start of the stream, but... I'm sure they'll catch it on Twitter. You know, we love the goats. Sadly, so, I don't have Wi-Fi at the goat, so uh, it would be a bad, not a great live stream besides yeah. goat. Then. <laughs> Got it. Cool. Um, so, if my screen could be made to share in the uh, in the live stream here quickly. All right. So let's go through what is inside get in the box of Gats before. So uh, you saw it a brief overlay there. Gatsby 4, static that scales. We brought Gatsby 4 to life to make sure that Gatsby scales with your needs of your site, no matter how big you need to make it or how you need to render and incorporate external data into your project. We did this by introducing a few key hallmark features. One was the kind of the first kind of architectural shift within Gatsby. And, and it's, the, it's, the, it's the beginning of decoupling our overall build process and introducing more parallelization through parallel query running. Um, we have seen sites dramatically increase, uh, uh, improve their uh, build speeds through in introducing parallel query running. And Ward will get into you know, some scenarios where um, that was, you know, that's more, uh, more appropriate for your particular site later in the chat. Also, we covered that in Gatsby Camp, so be sure to go and watch that video with myself and Leonard Jorgens where we do a deep dive on parallel uh, query running if you're curious to learn more. The next thing we introduced by way of um, kind of making sure that you can, you can scale your project, you know, pro Gatsby will scale to meet the needs of your project, is we introduced server-side rendering in Gatsby. So way back when we released Gatsby 3, uh, we put on a survey. What was the thing you wish you saw in Gatsby 3 but wasn't there? And the top request, big surprise, was server-side rendering in Gatsby. Guess what, folks? It happened. It's there now. Okay, so get out there and start playing with server-side rendering and push the envelope along with us as we move the web forward. But you know what we're really excited about? We are excited about deferred static generation. In fact, Ward talks about deferred static generation a lot more than he talks about server-side rendering. Um, so that's kind of his, that's kind of his favorite one here. Now, Deferred static generation was introduced so that you still get that incredible speed of the SSG aspect of Gatsby that we hold as static is king. Hat tip to Abi Iyer on that quote. So static is king. We wanted to make a way that you could get that great static speed without pay always paying the maximum build time cost up front. And so this was what, you know, Ward and, Ward and the other engineers he worked with, they, they kind of thought about what can we do differently to ensure that we're going to keep that great static speed and stability and resilience um, while not paying the maximum ta the tax of um, statically building everything. I'm going to say the jam tax. I know you want to say it. Oh, yeah. I want to say the jam tax. We want to stop the jam tax. Okay. So that's what we're after. You get the great aspects of SSG and we reduced that jam tax. So these were the major hallmark features in Gatsby. Yes, we very much focused on build speed um, and scale here, but also on developer control, right? So that you can control how various aspects of a project that you're working on will be rendered and will be generated and when. Um, Last thing I want to point out before we turn the reins over to Mr. Peters here is we do have a fantastic migration guide as we did for, uh, when we launched Gatsby 3. 
And um, some may even say that it's 10 times easier to go from Gatsby 3 to Gatsby 4 than it was to go from Gatsby 2 to Gatsby 3. But you tell us. We have a great guide here for you that'll help you along the way. And with that, I think we can stop sharing the screen. Uh, stop sharing my screen. I'll hand it over to Ward Peters, who was the mastermind behind the, the delivery uh, of Gatsby 4. Thank you. Um, yeah, you can put up my screen if you want to, so we can get started into the live coding. I only have one monitor, so I will not move my screen to StreamYard, hopefully. Uh, so if there's anything that I need to be aware of, just give me a match. I have one big large screen to all the work on. So um, let's start with the project that we're going to use. So I've created Gatsby Starter Shopify, which is a fork of the official one. We'll first start with the why I made a fork. So the official Gatsby Starter Shopify is using um, file system routes. And file system routes are these. Give me like two zoom in. More. Okay. Me, more plus. More plus. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sweet. So file system routes has these cool bits in their um, file names, but defer like the, the DSG feature doesn't work yet with um, file system routes. So with uh, to make the demo a little bit easier, I moved away from file system routes for now because we're gonna do it in a future um, release 4.1.0 where you can enable it. So this one that gets you started so you don't have to do anything besides that. So if I go to the project, and I'm first going to close some things here, because just clutter for all of you. And I'll be losing um, sight of my windows as well. So OK, I'll have to. This is very small for me, so let's see if we can make it work for all of us. We're going to see if Ward can code on his cell phone. <laughs> so we start with um, a Gatsby 3 project. Doesn't matter which version you're using. Um, and then we'll, we'll start with upgrading. So what I like to do is do a yarn upgrade, um, upgrade interactive. And if you don't use Yarn, there is like NPM outdated that you can still use. And I'll type that first. Outdated. It will give you a list of all the dependencies that you should upgrade. So as you can see, um, sorry, Shopify, they're all, um, my screen is too small. So let me see if I can make this bigger. You'll get like Gatsby plugin image. Okay, we're on the latest that um, Pegasus JSON gives us because we're using a carrot. But the latest is actually two um, for Gatsby. It's four dot zero. And if we um, and I like what Yarn has, so you can do and maybe npm has it as well. But I am not super familiar with um, npm, so I do upgrade interactive latest, and I get cool tool that I can say like, okay, I want Gatsby to be updated. I want Gatsby plugin analytics, basically all the Gatsby plugins. And then I click enter and then it will update my Pegasus JSON. So I don't have to like manually change everything in Pegasus JSON or like run yarn add Gatsby, Gatsby plugin image. So this is a little bit faster. And it's built. So next up is to do uh, yarn build, which runs Gatsby build. Or we can go develop, but let's first start with the build, because then I can point out a few um, changes that we made. So now it's pulling from Shopify, and I'll set up the environment with Gatsby Cloud in a second as well. But we'll first try to load this locally. So a change we made is that now a lot of these building JavaScript and you'll see uh, building HTML happen way earlier in, um, oh no, my screen froze. My screen is gone. Uh, 
Uh, let me see if I can share again. You see now? Just loading. Yep, you're back. Yes. Okay, see that's good. Oh, it's conveniently done like that. <laughs> and I that was start. fast. <laughs> Um, so we moved like uh, building products in JavaScript and HTML higher up, so like before the, the query running, because we needed to build DSG and SSR engines, which I'll show later in the stream. But then the new feature is run queries in worker. Like before we had um, run page queries and run static queries, but now it's all bundled in one. And then um, we basically, that's, basically the PQR feature that we have. So it runs on every core and I'll try to show um, it in a second through all the CPU um, stats, how things work. And then the other feature that we added is like a very cool page tree now. So I don't have any um, DSG SSR functions in this project. So you'll see uh, our templates or product template, one example of the uh, page that you might expect, and then all we have eight, 98 more pages available in in that uses this template, but there's no, so it's just SSG, and that's for everything. So it's going to be very clear how many pages you have, which rendering modes they use, so it's easy for you to view them. So if I, for example, open my network monitor, network whatever it is in uh, Sysmon or something. Maybe I should have looked it up before the live stream. So I can show like CPU and I have a lot of CPUs. Sadly, I don't have a MacBook Pro M1 yet, uh, maybe soon. But when I do, uh, I don't have HTOP, so I work on Windows. So I don't have uh, the cool HTOP graphs, but if I do a yarn, get speed clean. And do a build and then if I'll look at CPU, hopefully I can show it. I'm not 100% sure <laughs> if my window is going to do, um, or this project is going to make it um, show that we're actually using the CPU. So if not, you'll have to do it yourself and or believe me on my word. We wait for the query running. And there's also a talk about uh, that Patrick and and Leonard did that showing how PQR sped up um, the whole new Relic docs site. So you should check that out. Let me see, building a channel. I think it was too fast because we already went through it. So PQR is too fast to uh, actually monitor, but. Yeah, at least you, you saw that every CPU was doing something. And in V3, you would see that some, um, like all the cores except one, would be basically dropping to no usage at all. Um, next up is like, how can we use, like, um, maybe I should start with setting this project up on Gatsby Cloud. Because then from there on, we can go and use the features, the SG and SSR, because it's, it's all fun when it works locally. But of course, we want to show our work to the, to the world. So you kind of want to use Gatsby Cloud to make it a reality. And there was some inception here. Um, so because I use uh, Shopify, the Shopify starter and Shopify as a plugin, I already set, like, I'm not going to use this store for the rest of the stream, but at least I want to show you how you can set it up um, if you're using Shopify, um, then the coolest thing about the Shopify source plugin is that we have first class integration with Shopify. So we can add like a, we don't have to go into Gatsby Cloud right away. We can basically add a sales channel. And I have to look at um, add sales channel and then basically find more, visit the Shopify store. And I'll probably have to bump. So you can do this with a free Shopify account. You can just sign up and hook up Gatsby Cloud with within the Shopify UI, um, okay. which is what we're showing now. So this is our sales channel app, which is how Shopify works. We have a native integration. And yeah, 
ship will run out of box. So that gets the cloud. It will tell me like, okay, I want to add um, Gatsby store to the Gatsby Cloud API. Great. I can now, maybe I went too fast, like you um, can add sites now. So I clicked on add site. So I have, I have to log in with GitHub or with any other provider that you would like to use. Um, of course, I can just use a Shopify starter if I want to. Like it's a easy win to just show how Gatsby works and how fast it is, but I can go to um, import from Git to my um, organization to GitHub, look for Gatsby Harder Shopify, click on it. I can give it a name, but I'll keep, uh, maybe I should do Gatsby Starter Shopify live stream throw away because like I said, I'm not going to use this uh, store longer because I did some, like I already have a other store set up. And then when it's done, you see everything's already filled in. Um, I don't have to do anything else. So basically, Gatsby Cloud has provisioned everything. I do a great site and back to Shopify, I can see the status of things and I can go into click on there and go into Gatsby Cloud and see um, the build progress. And that's how you base like how easy it is to set up a Shopify e-commerce site with um, Gatsby. And now I did, did this, like of course I should uh, uh, import products and everything, but I'll go to the one I've set up before. So this is the the Shopify store that I set up before, and it also has a Gatsby Cloud um, integration. But when we have that, I can go into Shopify, like back into Gatsby Cloud. Um, I can show some cool features here. Like um, it just shows the build. I can show, um, it shows me which page types, because like I mentioned locally, I have this cool, nice graph, but I kind of want to show it in cloud as well, because every build might change SSR, DSG, or SSG. So we have this cool new progress bar uh, where you can see, oh, I have zero SSR, zero DSG, and all other pages are SSG. I see everything that's happened. So the same thing as I see locally with Gatsby built, you'll see, um, normally things like uh, building products in JavaScript. Um, and I think this is a V3 build because we still have run static queries and run page queries. And if I push up, like I did the changes locally um, for V4 already. So if I do an upgrade to V4, like this is a PR build and everything that I've done so far. So I just added package.json upgraded all the packages to v4 and pushed it. So I don't want to bother the live stream with just waiting for a build to load. So I already did it. But you can see that we'll see run query using workers. This is a little bit off. So these numbers seems to be something we still have to fix. But you see very fast, like only 0 0.5 seconds to run everything. And that's how easy it is to get started with V4. Of course, we want to go into the new modes, like deferred statics generation and server-side rendering. But something we've noticed with uh, PQR as well, like sometimes it's faster, sometimes it's slower, depending on how many queries you have, but also how slow your queries are. And we have like a an environment variable that you should play with yourself and hope, and if you find like a sweet spot for your website, feel free to let us know because now um, we batch. So we, let's say you have 10 cores in Gatsby and you have um, 1,000 queries. Now we divide your queries by 50 and then every, like a batch of 50, we go to every CPU core. Um, it's just a random number we picked that worked fairly well. <laughs> but you can adjust it by um, setting an environment fireable. I 
have to environment file is cross and and Patrick, correct me if I'm wrong. It should be in the um, upgrade guide or somewhere in the docs. It's a, yeah, it's in the docs, but I actually, I just asked the admin to put it in the chat so people can see exactly what it is that you're talking about. Gatsby parallel query, chunk size. Chunk size, yep. You can change it to like, by default is 50 and I don't recommend changing it unless PQR is giving you a slower build time. For example, let's say you have a lot of very slow queries by lowering it to 10, you will free up your CPU uh, faster so it can get like new batches because yeah, it waits until the batch of 50 or 10 or 20 is done um, to get new work. So making it lower means that we'll get uh, smaller batches, but it also means that there's more overhead to tell CPU cores like, hey, there's work to do. So uh, by default, don't change it. But if you need, if you want to play with it, you can. Um, you won't see anything different in the UI, just maybe faster or slower uh, query running. And now to the next feature, TSG. Like, how do I make a page like deferred or static? Like, I um, have many pages but some are less important or maybe I don't want to pay the gem, gem text like Patrick mentioned. Um, for now, if I go to Gatsby Note, Gatsby Note, actually fairly simple. So um, you might be famil familiar with the create page API. So to go back to the lifecycle, so I have exports, create pages. I do my GraphQL query to get all the products. And then for every product, I want to create a, a page. So I do pod, products. I slugify the product type and I slugify the handle. They give it a component, product template, and that's our JavaScript template that the, is being used for the render and for the client. We give it context, node ID, and a product type because the query inside product template uses it. So I go back to here. You can see, so this is the JavaScript that we use to render a product page and it's a lot but i don't go in too deep into it right now and i get the id i get the product type and then i can create like a query for every product so what it, this one does is gets the product with the id that i get and then also gets suggestions of that product product type So those, that means we have made it an SSG page, but I can make a, a, the page deferred as well by just adding defer is true. That's all you need to do. So if I now do a yarn build, I'll take my, And maybe it's time to also come into like why or when should I use a DSG page? It all depends on what your use cases are and, and how long you want to wait for a build. So let's say you have um, a thousand site page, probably going to build in like two minutes or so, or three minutes. Um, but sometimes it's not good enough, like three minutes for some businesses, it's fine. Or maybe it's 10 minutes or 20 minutes. But you have a lot of content that doesn't matter too much for your users or it's at least not a landing page where a lot of users go directly to then it might be a good way to to defer them because then we won't build them at build time but we will only build them at uh, we will build them at runtime so the first visit we will build them and a good thing to do is just go to your analytics like google analytics or whatever analytics software you use and then you could um, figure out like okay which are the pages that i get a lot of visits on, uh, direct visits, all those kind of things, and then figure out um, if you should defer it or not. But like every like every feature you use, like DSG, SSR, it all has its um, pros and cons. So still use it uh, with caution. Um, so yeah, and real you... quick for deferred static generation, Let's just talk quickly about like what it does and how it is on the spectrum from static to like an actual server-side rendering. So deferred is just deferring it 
for that one first request. So if you can think about that 10,000 page example, um, let's say we make a hundred of them critical and, and the 900 are deferred. That means that we're going to build it at whatever, 90% quicker. Um, cause we're not, we're going to basically defer that tax, um, after the critical pages are built. So if I was a developer, I'd be able to, once those hundred pages were built, I'd be able to go on my merry way. Right? Like I would have everything already there. I'd be able to work. I'd be able to see. And so would any other site visitor on those first hundred pages. And that would act completely static. Correct. Those, yes. that first hundred pages. And then part of that build of those 900 other pages, every single site visitor for that first time, um, what would that act like? Like how, how would the deferred pages act after um, those first 100 pages were critically built at build time? So the, the first so the first visit will go to, and maybe I should um, bring up the uh, uh, diagram that we have, because I think- Yeah, that'd be awesome. We can walk through that. So the first time, let's say we have website.com about and it's marked as deferred we will go to gatsby cloud hosting um, we haven't built it yet so gatsby cloud doesn't have it in its cache so we go to our gatsby cloud worker the gatsby cloud worker has all the data already so gatsby so that the the main feature of or the, uh, um, a, a very great um, um, benefit of DSG is like the data itself, we already sourced it at build time. So we have it already there. So it's part of the Gatsby Cloud Worker. So when you hit, when a user hits website.com slash about, we go to the Gatsby Cloud Worker, it will say, hey, I need the slash about page. Gatsby will fetch the data that it needs for that page from its local data store. So we don't go to servers anywhere in the world. So let's say Facebook goes down we don't care, like we have the data here, so we can just show it. And then we render the page, um, the, the HTML. We return it immediately to the user. And then on the background, we also store it in a cache on the file system and also on the CDN cache. So then let's say you visit it again, like you hit refresh, or maybe another user comes in, it will go to Gatsby Cloud Hosting and that is this part. It will go, to, oh, I already have it, like the DSG, is gone, like it's now a regular SSG page. And then we um, bring it back directly to the user. So you you pay a small tax on the first request because we have to do it at runtime, but only the rendering piece, like the data fetching is already done. And then we, we give it back to the user. And then after that, all those pages will be part of that static build. And I think that's like another hugely important thing is the build is still atomic. So if the build gets changed and that page never got, uh, let's say, rendered and it was still always deferred, once you update uh, the data layer again, we're going to ask for that next page to be rendered. So in that way, it's always one build. It's always one piece of atomic um, content. And it may or may not get deferred. Um, but either way, we're not actually changing um, that build. So we can roll back and we're still going to get that same exact content, um, even if the page had never uh, been built in real time um, during runtime. Yeah, and uh, another cool thing, like you might remember, ink rental builds. Like uh, Gatsby knows when to invalidate caches, when knows when a page um, a data data is used in a certain page. So let's say you have a DSG page, and the next build, like uh, you go to the DSG page, we made it SSG, so we did the first render. It's now part of the Gatsby Cloud caching. Let's say the next build doesn't invalidate that page, then the page will still be SSG. So there's no no reason to remove the cache from the CDN. Like we just keep it. So that's another benefit that Gatsby will give you. So we're only getting faster. We're only getting better. It's all about scale. All right. Let's check out SSR now. Let's see what we can do with that. Yeah, maybe like uh, let's go back to the example yeah, yeah. and the page tree now shows as well like I have the I have now a D uh, symbol here, which refers to DSG. I get my products again one page showing me okay this is what I expect and then I have ninety eight more. Let's say I have one deferred uh, or one SSG page. It will show in this graph as well like um, one SSG and how you could do it is for example if you go here 
this is a conditional. So I could say if, um, let's say, no top product type, I don't know the product type that I have um, is game, then I would defer it. If it's not, then I would not. Um, and that would change. You would not, you would not defer product. a game product type. <laughs> That's also true. But it just shows how easy it is to add conditional logic to this, uh, make it work. So if I go back to Gatsby Cloud, I also already prepared um, that uh, use case. So I have zero SSR, 198 ESG, and 148 SSG pages. Um, and yeah, and a good example of that conditional word would be something like dates, maybe, in a blog. Uh, you can think about like TechCrunch, who has thousands and thousands and thousands of articles. Um, but obviously, the build time uh, would take an account of all that. They could theoretically do something conditionally across like the last six months, right? Or the yep. last three months worth of blogs, build those in our critical time. Um, but other than that, wait until um, it's deferred. So you can see how it's really powerful that conditional uh, logic. Yep. There is uh, something that you have to um, be aware of as well. Like we have to bundle these uh, engines. So they, they do also take some time of your build away. So let's say um, like this engine took 40 seconds to build the first time, like the se second times we will do Webpack caching. So it's not have to be bundling again, but you have to be aware that DSG also doesn't come free at build time, but for a large site, this is going to be way faster than building all those pages at SSG page. Um, and then I'll also go locally to show how you can know if a page has actually got TSG. So um, I've built it. And then if I go into public, I'll make this bigger too. Yep. I do public. I go to products, I have automotive, and then uh, maybe I should have done a clean, uh, or no, no, these are the these are the index pages, so the category pages, but I don't see any products pages, I think. Uh, no, it seems like it is built. So I'm gonna do a clean to make sure that my public is gone and then do a build. Maybe check if I actually did save defer true. Yeah, it's true save. I'll not wait for this. I'll go to here already. Again, like with DSG, let's see it in action in Gatsby Cloud. So if I can click on an image, so that was a DSG page. If I go to games, these are actually, when I click on it, like there was a very, very small delay. Like I think it was 500 milliseconds or something. And yeah. So, and also if I go to a category page, Gatsby is very smart. So we start prefetching bits of our page. So as a user, I'm probably looking at which product I want from this category. So when I click on it, it's already there because we already did the work that was necessary to build this page. Um, and then if I go into Gatsby Cloud, I'll have SSR logs where you can see that we actually did work for those DSG pages. Because there might be might be um, there might be cases where your DSG page fails because we don't build it at build time, so we can't um, we can't break a build because the, the HTML is not being rendered. So when could maybe a DSG build fail? When you have a value that is returned null and you didn't make sense of that inside your your code base. That's where like uh, runtime errors can come in, and then um, this it will show up in here, so you know like okay, I made made a mistake. Let me fix it. Uh, but more most of the time, it's just showing you all the requests that happen, and also show you how long they are. Um, and they're they're pretty fast. So that is the SG. Can I show it in here locally now too? The build has happened. So if I go to products, yeah, yeah. So you see that these do not have any products anymore. And that's how you could validate locally um, if DSG worked or not. 
we developed, we already had some kind of um, DSG piece with V3, we shipped query on demand and has some merits of DSG. So um, any developer, we, we don't save HTML anyway. So you wouldn't be able to really test this with um, develop. You can also run it locally, of course, like yarn serve, SV serve, local host has DSG too. The only caveat here is that we never save um, the page to disk. So it's always um, DSG tier. So even if I go to public, again, it will not get those files. Um, now I think we want to go to the other one, which is SSR, server side. The manager. other one. Remember I said how much Ward loves DSG. <laughs> There are fairly there are there are use cases that you need it for um, SSR. Let's say, and I think um, like SSR for example, why would you want to use it? One of them is if you have real time data or you have data that is not part of the Gatsby data layer um, and doesn't fit the data layer for some reason. Maybe you have sensitive user data you don't want to have inside the Gatsby data layer or something, but you still want to give that very rich. Um, user experience because, um, for for example, the difference with going to client side routes where you start with a shell, like for example, um, like if you go to or Gatsby dashboard, you get your shell, and then we do a lot of things with AJAX, like um, like fetch requests to a GraphQL API or to another API. But you see that there's first a loading screen. And for an app like Gatsby Cloud, this is fine because this is what user expects. But sometimes if it's your homepage and you want to show like some announcements that are real time or breaking news, you might want to go SSR because it just gives a better feeling than giving you a, a user a spinner or maybe giving um, them some layout shifts happening. And th those are things you should be um, thinking of like, okay, sometimes SSR makes sense, but try to use SSG or DSG um, while, while you can, because they always will give, they always gives, give you a better uh, user experience because we can cache things better. And how would you add, um, add SSR to a page? And I was going to show how to do search um, in, um with server-side rendering but to be honest the shopify api is not as easy as i would like it to be so let me just go to the home page or to another page and um, add like just some small get server data bits that i want to add to um, and i know that um Jackson um, is, has a PR open in the official Gatsby starter, Shopify, to actually do a proper search. Um, but yeah, I, I was, wasn't going to uh, try my, my luck here. So how do you add it? You add a new function, export function, get server data. Get server data is uh, basically marks a page as SSR. So even if you let's say if if I add get server data to the product template, so if I go to template and product, even if I add a defer to it, doesn't matter. Like we moved it to an SSR page. Like get server data in your component always wins from any other rendering page. Then you can add props, and here is a logic where you can do whatever you want to. Um, export, of course, it's going to be this. I could do a fetch to anything that I want. So maybe I should go to Docs API. You no, know, I like Docs. So I also like Goat, but I don't know if there's a Goat API. So uh, maybe that's for another live stream. Yeah, you can make it with all your Goat. <laughs> that's a good idea. I do fetch, so I do const result is await. I don't have to import anything. Like natively, we support fetch inside these uh, functions because we kind of want to make it feel more browser-like. Um, 
because why like which fetch API do I use? Do I use node fetch? Do I use Axios? Do I use Cot? So many options. Let's just go what we're used to on the web fetch. And Gatsby will handle all the bits underneath it. So I get this response. So I do um, I get the rest. So for example, um, data because fetch API gives me a response object, and then I still have to move it to JSON. So I could do console.log, and maybe I should start the develop server because that's going to be fun to watch. Because we have like live reloading and everything, so you don't have to restart the develop server, um, those kind of things. We want to make sure that you're, you stay in your flow. Live builds. I feel like Gatsby four. This should be uh, part of it. Gatsby two, Gatsby one. Maybe this uh, would have been a two hour live stream, <laughs> but you know, Gatsby four. It's a one hour live stream. Perfect. We're all up. So close eight thousand, and I think I made the index one server side. Only if I go to the page, see my logs here. So if I do like data. I have to go to the page. See, so I'll see, okay, I get my message, I get my status. Of, and then maybe I want to know other things like what can I use here? So maybe I do just arcs and see what's inside arcs. So we also get errors. So I made a mistake by pasting something that was on my clipboard. Um, I get like, okay, this seems to be not great. And if I go to my developer uh, environment, I also see the error. So it's all integrated in what you're used to at the um, like with V3 and everything else. Now I save it. I hopefully fix the build. Yes. Um, let me remove it. Let me refresh. And here in the log, I see okay, what is all available? So you get all, all the headers that you need. You get your meta, you get your real URL. So this is for a page data because we didn't develop. Um, this actually might be something we should fix because this should be the root URL. It, you shouldn't care as a user as for page data because that's a Gatsby implementation. We get query and we get params and params comes back to file system routes where you have these sweet URLs like these ones. Then you would get um, product type as a param. Or when you use like a, a star or something, like a, if you have a client side route where you want to catch everything up, uh, I want to make like catch every route that's part of it. You could also use get server data to make it an SSR page, and then params will get a star with everything beneath here. And also query. So if I do localhost test this one, I will see it in here. And that gives you extra functionalities to use and play with um, inside, like doing a fetch. Let's say you want to change random based on a query parameter, you would be able to. Um, and then props is data. OK, that's all cool. But how do I now use it? So we had index page and data. Data is still the query that we had before. So you can use queries with get server data. So there is you don't have to use SSR with real time data and you and not using the Gatsby data that you're used to. You can use both, which is amazing. Then data, we have server data now, so it's an extra prop you can use. And then I can print it wherever I want. So I could say image source. Forgot what the API was giving me back. So I'm going here, I'll zoom in a little bit. So it's message is basically the URL. So I can do server data dot message because props is equal to what server data will be. I give it a width of 100, 500, alt, log, give it, I have an error, a known one. Which is interesting. 
me refresh this picture. Okay. There we go. We get it on. Yeah, board with, with server side rendering and pulling from uh, the data from the data layer, is this something like will we see more personalization be able to be done and like actually having a, a shopping cart functionality that's like a little bit more personalized to the user here? Yeah, you could. You could. The question is like a shopping cart. You have to make the the um, decision of do you really want to do it um, SSR or is it like going to a Gatsby function and getting it with like a loading spinner good enough? But yes, you would be able to. Like you would be able to like hello X. Um, here is your shopping cart, for example. And we will be building more APIs on top of these things to make like A/B testing more easy. Um, all of those kind of things are like on the roadmap for. I'm not going to say dates, but like it's all on our mind, no, minds. Like this is just a small step into making Gatsby even better. Um, and I'll also gonna show like, the error page. So let's say. Um, let me do arcs.query and maybe I should use like the structuring because that's cool and cool new feature in, or not maybe not new in JavaScript, but it's cool feature and say like a uh, error. And I give it the query parameter, I'll throw new error of test. But of course, the same thing with DSG and with SSR, it's runtime, so things can happen when you don't expect it. So especially in SSR, you if you go to a, a real-time API, the API can go down. Your if you use query parameters, the user might fill in query parameters that do not match your expectations. So you always have to be um, ready for the worst. So if I do error and I do hello, I get like a uh, 500 error. Okay, here I get a blank screen. I should get. Okay, I get it in here. So I error get server data, and that's something we definitely have to improve in a future version. That you also see it in here. But let's say we go to uh, do a build, and then do a surf, and maybe I should push it up to Gatsby Cloud in the meantime too, so we can see. What's happening here? I'll create a new branch. 500. See if we can add. I'll just add everything, I think. This one. Yes. Let's see. Commit and then journal. If I made it a branch, I'll set up GitHub that it's um, doing a pull request. So then I don't know if I'll be able to show it because time is on the short side. You can try and talk board. over it. So I'll create it and then I'll go to do it, lo show it locally first. So, and maybe if then the Gatsby Cloud is done, because now it's going to be a whole new build. So it's not going to use incremental builds or anything because um, it is a branch build. And so I have this one, and that's me to error um, is 500. Was it error or did I make? Very error. Right. There's some questions in the chat uh, right now about DSG versus ISR. And I think that Sid made a great point below and we talked to, about before. Um, it's the atomic nature still of the DSG build. The entire build is still gathered at build time, even though it's not rendered at build time. Um, you're not going to get a weird wonky state um, where like some of the build that was done statically is showing a piece of data um, that is now outdated by a page that is run and rendered at runtime. Um, so those two ways are like, are how the DSG is, is a little bit different. And again, we're trying to stay true to obviously our static roots, but also like Jamstack and, and kind of having atomic nature um, be part of that um, criteria.
Maybe you guys the class is going to be faster. Hmm. Don't know where I did it. Are you looking to show the errors in the SSR logs in Gatsby Cloud? Yeah. That's still building. All right, Patrick, do you have, uh, where can people go after this? Um, what do we want people talking about uh, on social? Um, can you give us a little insight on that? Yeah, sure. And we'll actually have all these links. Um, we'll put, we have a series of links here. So <clears throat> one thing is um, where to go to get Gatsby, Gatsby 4. Standard thing, right? You saw Word do it earlier on. You're going to get it out at npm, jess.com, or just go to... NPM at, uh, NPMI Gatsby um, or go to latest or up carrot four, you'll be good to go. Um, tweet what you build um, with hashtag, this is a long one, get ready. Gatsby release four, and put that into the comments there. So you, if you build anything with Gatsby four and you wanna show it off, you're using SSR, using DSG, share that hashtag and we'll bring it in, take a look at it. Maybe we'll retweet your, your cool new thing that you built. Um, if you run into any issues, open it as you normally would any other issue in our GitHub repository, and we'll tag it with Gatsby 4 if it is Gatsby 4 related. We want to make sure it's easy for you to report anything that you find so we can make the product better for everyone out there. For the GitHub, uh, for, sorry, for the Discord users, we have a dedicated Gatsby 4 channel on our Discord server. So go out there, join the conversation. It's already popping off today. I see Kyle Matthews out there helping people out with any questions that they have. It's always fun talking with Kyle, talking with the founder and creator of a, of a framework. Um, lastly, we do have a survey going in through this chat. You've seen the link a couple of times. We'd really appreciate you letting us know what you think of the new features in Gatsby 4. And uh, just like we did for Gatsby 3, what didn't you see that you wish you would have seen? All right. So help us identify the next big thing or the next little things. Maybe there's always sometimes there's a lot of little things that need to be done, not just some one big thing. Um, and hint, hint, we're starting to kind of go into that mode. Right? We want to make sure that we're not just bringing these big bang new features into Gatsby, but they're also making the developer's life easier, making it easier to be successful with Gatsby. So I think that hits a lot of them. And Ward, if you if you uh, don't have that error log yet, I can show just from my toy site what it looks like. I have those. So, so I drive it sure. locally, but you might want to might need to uh, show it later on. But so locally, of course, like errors can happen. Internal server, you don't want to show this to your user, right? Like they lost context of your site now. So you might remember that we have like a 404 page. We also now support 500. So I could do um, 500. I could change the text here, do whatever I want to. And then um, if I build it, this nice error will be the same as a 404. So if let's say I did a, have a 404, like uh, I'm not going to build it. It would look like this, but then with whatever error you want to show, um, just making sure that you get the same, like you, you have the same um, resilience that you have with um, or at least the expectation that people, oh, things might go wrong, but I still want my, my users of my website to know what's going on, or maybe I have to refresh and try again, those kind of things. Let me see if V5, okay, show 500. Let me see if it works. If I go to SSR logs, you will see that I have run rendering dash with SSR rendering strategy. And if I did like a, or is this error? I get this error. And then also in cloud, I should be able to get the error shown. Maybe I should refresh. Interesting. I thought we were going to show Maybe I should refresh again. It gives, oh, yeah, it's, this is the error, but we should make it more, yeah. more um, visible. Need some that fireballs it's on either side of that error. Word, come on. 
Test. Yeah, but yeah. So so I drew tests here as well. So I drew it inside the index. Actually, Gatsby Cloud should show like an error or a warning label, uh, error label that is actually error, because I don't want to type. Well, maybe I should like error, but uh, yeah, that's it. So it's showing that it's an error, just not as visible as we want to. Um, but yeah, that's uh, SSR and how you can like look at the logs, see how long how long things take to run. I don't know if I need to show anything else in the live demo. I think we have a couple of questions um, that some have been answered, but we definitely want to broach some of them. I think uh, one of the big ones is with the third static generation, how long is the difference uh, in response time from that first request um, to what everyone else will get once it's on uh, on that edge? So it all depends on what plugins you're using and um, how how long your resolvers take. So if, if we go back to the piece, um, uh, which is good do I show? Do I have it here? Upgrade to V4. So if I go to, for example, the SSR logs, so this is the DSG example that I took faster. So you can see like for to, to load this page, um, like it was a client side page. So we basically only generated a JSON file for it. That's so we can do our client side navigation. Only took us 0 .0 0 .0 0.006 uh, seconds. So that's very fast. But there are, but also if we look at the query, for example, um, in here, if I go to templates, so I know how the Shopify plugin or source plugin knows. There's nothing. So title is just getting it from the data store. There's no other transformations happening. But thing, let's say you have like your text or your description. Let's say it's MDX. What DSG has to do is convert that piece of text to MDX uh, equivalent. And in our plugin now, it uses like Webpack compilation. Then it does like a, a React render. So that's probably going to take a little bit more time. Um, the same if you have a page with a lot of images. We have to do those images at DSG time. That will also take time. So it all depends on what a page is filled up with, how expensive are your resolvers, your GraphQL resolvers, and it's mostly depending on which transformers are you using, which source plugins are you using. So it all depends. So you should definitely check out how long it takes. Is it good enough? Not good enough? Let us know. So there's definitely improvements that we have to make to make every source plugin, every transformer fast. But like we don't have enough data yet to figure out like, okay, this is something we have to work on. This is something, but you can rest assured, like it might, not all the use cases now might be very fast, but in the future, they will all be really blazing fast. All right. That makes a ton of sense. And I think the other question um, that we'll get to in our last minute is common as well. If a bot like Google search bot scrapes uh, some of the site or if it heads to a site with link uh, references, is that going to trigger um, those builds during runtime as well? Depends on which crawler comes down. Like uh, Google has two crawlers. If that's one which is just a text crawler, then no. Like it just does a view source basically or a curl request. If you're more familiar with it, it like gets your source and it picks out SEO. They also have a JavaScript crawler, um, which runs less often, but that one would be um, running those link tags because it would it's just like a regular browser. All right, that makes sense. All right, Patrick and Ward, thank you so much uh, for coming out today. I think we have one uh, survey link we wanna show um, right now. So I think we can flip that, Rodney. Um, but everyone, Go out and build with Gatsby 4. Uh, we hope you really enjoy all the new features. We definitely think that deferred static generation SSR um, allow you to build anything on Gatsby today and, and really push Jamstack uh, to the limit with static, uh, static building. Thanks for coming, everyone. Great to see you. I can't wait to see what you build with Gatsby. Thank you. Bye. Bye.